the definition of knowledge, which functions as kind of the starting point, kind of anchors all of the debate, all of the work that comprises this field called epistemology, is three ingredients that, on most epistemologists' view, all must be in place in order for someone to say that they have knowledge. Those three ingredients are truth, belief, and justification. And so in epistemology, the starting point, the working definition of knowledge is as follows. To know something is to hold a justified true belief. What is a justified true belief? And why should we take these three criteria to be a good definition of knowledge in the first place? Well, it's actually fairly intuitive, I think, which is nice. Of course, it is just the starting point. It's just the beginning of epistemology. Um, but a good place to start is, I think, something rather intuitive. And, and I think you get that here. Let's take it piece by piece, and hopefully you'll see what I mean. Let's start with belief. Take your own working definition of knowledge, whatever it is, and ask yourself, does it make sense to say that you know something that you don't believe? Probably not, right? It doesn't make sense. At the very minimum, if someone knows that a proposition is true, then they must believe it is true. Knowing something but not believing it, it just seems contradictory. Of course, it also doesn't make sense to say that just by believing something makes it true. Well, that's not the case. There's lots of things that people believe that aren't true. I mean, people used to believe, most people, in fact, used to believe that the earth was flat. I guess today there are some people who still think it's flat, but we won't go there. We won't go there today in this video. People used to believe the earth was flat. We know it isn't. We know it's round. So when people believed that the earth was flat, they believed something that wasn't true. So they didn't have knowledge of the earth, the earth's shape. So clearly, at the minimum, to have knowledge must mean to have a belief, which also happens to be true. But here's the problem, right? Anybody can say something is true. I could tell you that the earth is flat and uh, everything you uh, think you know about the earth's shape is actually wrong. It's, it's really flat. It's a big conspiracy. Um, what's the first question you would probably ask me? You would probably say, what is your reason for thinking that it's true that the earth is flat? And maybe I say, well, there's this um, really uh, unscrupulous YouTuber who has a, a reputation for uh, lying and fabricating stories. And he put out a video last week saying that the earth was flat. And after watching that video, I concluded that the earth must be flat. And you would probably sit back and think, well, there are so many, so many things wrong with that picture that you just painted. There's so many reasons which are not good reasons um, which you're using to justify your belief that the earth is flat. Maybe I ask you, well, why do you believe the earth is round? You might say something like, well, all the scientific data seems to confirm that it's round. And if, like most people, you think scientific data is important, then what you have is what you could call justification, that third component to knowledge. Justification, simply put, is whenever you have a good reason to believe that what you believe is actually true. So if you have a belief, and that belief is true, and you have a good reason to believe that it's true, then congratulations, you have knowledge. So one question that might be likely to arise, especially if you've never heard this particular definition of knowledge before, is... Is it possible to have a true belief 
that isn't justified. Like, can I believe something is true, but not have a good reason to believe it's true? Well, I'll give you an example. Take a lottery ticket. Say I get a lottery ticket and I believe that I have the winning numbers. And they call the numbers in the evening on the radio or the TV or something. And I won. I had the winning numbers. It was true that I had the winning numbers. I believed that I had the winning numbers. But did I really have a good reason to believe that? Well, st statistically speaking, absolutely not. Um, the odds against me having the winning numbers are like astronomical. Um, statistically speaking, it's very unlikely that I am going to have the winning numbers to the lottery. So I believed it and it happened to be true. But at that time when I held that ticket in my hand and I said, you know, I really believe this is the one. I can have all the belief I want, but I really don't have much justification. I don't have a good reason to believe that my ticket would be the winning one. So that's an example of where you can have a true belief, but not the justification. So hopefully it's clear why all three of these ingredients need to be in place for us to say we have knowledge. And they kind of cover all the bases, at least I think so. Uh, they kind of cover all the bases um, that are pretty intuitive. I think everyone agrees that knowledge must have something to do with truth, that it's kind of absurd to say that you know something without believing it. And I think pretty much everyone can probably agree that you must have good reasons to believe what you believe. Otherwise, it doesn't really seem like knowledge would have much much meaning. It wouldn't be much different from personal opinion or belief. So what exactly is the big problem? Like, why do epistemologists argue so much with each other? Why are there so many different positions to take in epistemology? Why are we still writing books about epistemology if we've got this great definition of knowledge uh, all set up for us? Well, you may have already figured it out, but justification, good reasons, that's the problem for the most part. To a lesser extent, epistemologists might argue over what counts as truth. That's something we will talk about a little bit. Maybe to an even lesser extent, philosophers might debate what counts as belief. There's definitely a place for that, but the real crux of the issue most of the contention within epistemology today centers around this question. What the heck counts as a good reason to believe something? That's what we'll talk about now.